If you've clicked on this video, you're probably wondering the same thing as us. What is going on with NASCAR? The sport has implemented so many bans in the past week that one can't help but wonder, are the penalties fitting the crime? Apart from Hendrick Motorsports and Denny Hamlin's penalties, NASCAR went one step further and is almost certainly going to penalize Josh Williams' protest as he parked the car in an unusual spot after the race. The voice of the drivers is very loud right now, and at this point, NASCAR doesn't plan on lifting its foot off the drivers' necks. Let's start step by step and see where it initially went wrong. Or more precisely, when did NASCAR start to implement all of these bans and penalties? It all started at the Phoenix Raceway, when Hendrick Motorsports' dominance was something NASCAR tried to examine further. And that's why they took the hood louvers after the first practice session for a further investigation. It proved that these parts were modified illegally, but the fact that Hendrick Motorsports went a step further and dominated the racing weekend, with all four of their drivers finishing in the top 10, and William Byron winning his second consecutive race, showed that NASCAR was maybe on the wrong track here. So the logical thing would be to stop digging deeper and just appreciate greatness, right? According to NASCAR, it isn't. Although we cannot help but agree with the second penalty that was given out in the same racing weekend to Denny Hamlin, the JGR driver admitted on his podcast that his actions were deliberate and that he wasn't holding back against Ross Chastain on the last lap of the race. Before we dig deeper into the nature of NASCAR's penalties, we'd like to ask you to like our video, subscribe to our channel, turn on the notifications from NASCAR Culture. That way, you'll be able to stay in touch with more NASCAR-related content and you'll help us grow and deliver exactly what you're here for, NASCAR News. Now let's get back to the penalties. Why are we talking so much about penalties? Well, it seems like NASCAR opted out for one of the fiercest and harshest options out there when it comes to putting things in the right perspective and making an example out of the illegal teams. Let's take Hendrick Motorsports penalty first. NASCAR fined the team's crew chiefs $100,000 each and penalized Alex Bowman, Kyle Larson, and William Byron 100 points and 10 playoff points each, along with their teams and the number nine team. Obviously, the fact that Josh Berry was a substitute for Chase Elliott went into the narrative that he isn't eligible for receiving this penalty in the first place. But NASCAR did make a strong statement with this penalty and rest assured that Hendrick Motorsports weren't happy with how they were dealt with in this situation. The first one to talk about this penalty was obviously the vice president of competition, Ed Canals, who went on to question the sport's actions against one of the most successful teams in 2023 so far. Remember, in the previous season, lots of penalties were given to other drivers for different parts being found to be illegal, which is why NASCAR thought that the actions they've taken against Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin were going to serve as a reprimand. At the Pocono Raceway, these drivers were found to have additional tape on the nose of the car, which is why they were disqualified. A year later, NASCAR enters the season with the same problematic situation, something that Sawyer said that he's very disappointed to witness. However, the vice president of competition, Knaus, didn't share the same opinion as Sawyer as he went on to elaborate. I think it's a terrible situation, not only for us, but for the industry to be quite honest with you. And I think that's what I dislike the most. It's ugly. We shouldn't be in this situation and it's really unfortunate that we are because it doesn't help anybody. We as a company, we are in the garage. Every one of these teams is being held accountable to put their car out there to go through inspection and perform at the level they need to. The teams are being held accountable for doing that. Nobody is holding the single source providers accountable at the level that they need to be to give us the parts we need. That goes through NASCAR's distribution center and NASCAR's approval process to get those parts, and we're not getting the right parts. Furthermore, Knaus went on to slam NASCAR and add that there is so much work to do in terms of improving in many areas, and this is exactly where his disappointment comes from. Nonetheless, Hendrick Motorsports decided to appeal the decision of NASCAR to penalize all four of their drivers, as the main reasons that they listed in their appeal were that the louvers provided to the teams through NASCAR's mandated single-source supplier do not match the design submitted by the manufacturer and approved by NASCAR. Documented inconsistent and unclear communication by the sanctioning body specifically related to louvers, and recent comparable penalties issued by NASCAR have been related to issues discovered during a post-race inspection. Whether NASCAR will see further into this appeal, time will tell, 
but it seems likely they'll have another appeal on their hands, as they've also penalized Denny Hamlin for his actions against Ross Chastain. Even though Hamlin did say publicly on his podcast that his actions were deliberate against Trackhouse Racing's driver, the JGR driver is not happy with the penalty given to him by NASCAR, as the sport decided to dock him 25 driver points and $50,000. But what comes next is a very interesting development. And just when we thought that NASCAR was done handing out penalties and bans left and right, the 29-year-old from the Xfinity series named Josh Williams comes and takes the spot for himself. He was involved in a wreck on the track on lap 27 of Saturday's race and was placed under NASCAR's damaged vehicle policy. But how did this crash happen anyway? And what's so controversial about it? On the restart of the race, Williams' car lost debris because the tape wasn't able to withstand the cold temperatures as the number 92 exited the pits, which brought out another caution. This is where race control acted immediately, asking for Williams to take his car to the garage for extending the caution, as the violation is found in the series rulebook and is issued at the discretion of the series director. After arguing the call, Williams pulled down the front stretch and parked the car on the finish line. When exiting the vehicle, Williams continued to walk and wave across the field in a proud manner towards the pit road while the race remained under caution. It's definitely a bold move, and when asked about why he did what he did, Williams said that it was a protesting move against the call for him to bring the car back for repair due to its unsafetiness. After the race, Williams was summoned to the race officials, along with his crew chief, Brian Berry, and the team owner, Mario Gosselin. And on social media, Williams put a simple caption of DNF, along with the number 92 car, in which the damage was more than visible. This is where things get interesting, because guess who came out in support of Williams? Denny Hamlin, the man that has his own penalty and the man that got docked points, came to defend the 29-year-old driver in the Xfinity series, as the JGR driver tweeted that he will pay the fine in response to the picture that was posted by Williams. Whether this is a stubbornness from Denny Hamlin against the sport that he is likely to exit in the next couple of years, or a legitimate worry that the penalties given to the drivers are truly unbased ones, time will tell. But one thing is for sure, NASCAR's penalties have started to irritate the sport's experts, and it seems like something needs to change drastically if we want to see a peaceful 2023 season in terms of penalties. But what Williams had to say about this matter truly shows that he knows what's going on behind the scenes as his only goal was to voice my opinion. One couldn't argue with the ingeniousness of this thought, right? When elaborating further, Williams was asked whether he thinks a suspension is on its way, and he tried to keep the neutral voice speaking as he added, it's up to Wayne and everybody at NASCAR. If that's what the rule is, and that's what they decide to do, every action has a reaction. It is what it is. It's racing. You have bad days and good days. I didn't do it to be spiteful or make a huge scene, or cause everyone to stand out here at the NASCAR holler, but I just wanted to voice my opinion. I felt like it wasn't right, but it's in the rule book. I'm a racer. I have been racing since I was four years old. I've been bad before. I've done things wrong. We're all human, right? It's just something I did, and if I have to pay the price for it, it is what it is. At some point, we need to ask ourselves, are the NASCAR drivers scared from the penalties at this point? It seems like they believe that they are far above the sport and anything is allowed, but NASCAR is here to prove them wrong. Whether the conflict will deepen and whether the appeals of HMS and Hanlon will be accepted, time will tell. But as of now, we're yet to see the penalty that Williams will receive and the support that Hanlon will give him as promised. What do you think about the penalties and bans from NASCAR? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to stay in touch with more NASCAR-related content, make sure to click on the logo that will appear on your screen.